mountain where there will be no setting sun. My light must shine along the way I'll sing His praise while ages roll And strive to help some troubled soul Life's evening sun is sinking low A few more days and I must go Where there will be no setting sun Life's evening sun is sinking low A few more days and I must go To meet the deeds that I have done Where there will be no setting sun
majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise, majesty. I will request that we all rise up as we have our opening prayer. Yeah, uh, I will request that we all rise up as we have our opening prayer and then we start the song service. Uh, those who are out, please, uh, you can join us after we have prayed. Let's pray. Dear loving Father, it's a wonderful morning, afternoon, Lord, that you have enabled us to be here. We thank you for thy tender care, thy mercies, and thy love upon us, O oh God. We have gathered here, Lord, as we go through the prayer service of our late brother, newborn. We pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We pray for the family members, wherever they are going, that you may comfort them. We pray for our brethren on the way, Lord, that you may hasten them, that you may join together. As we go through this song service, May you give us a voice to praise you and a heart to rejoice in thee, even though through a somber mood we know that God you are in control. Be with us and guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you and welcome. So I will welcome all of you as we start our song service. Please uh, feel free to sing to the Lord. Uh, we have our lead chorister, Sister Jen, to lead us. Sister Jen, please guide us. We'll start with song 181, Does Jesus Care? <coughs> Does Jesus care? Three sing. Does Jesus care when my heart is bare to deeply for my Does Jesus get three sin? Does Jesus care when my heart is paid too deeply for my Nah! 
things are dark, it is well with my soul because I know the Lord is in control. Number 427, there is a land that's fair. In the land, in the land of, in the land. Says, lies the city for square we go. In the land of faithless death, lies the city for square. It shall never pass away, and there is no night there. Go shall walk by way of tears. There's no City for square, all the street with gold and lead, and there is no night there. Go shall walk by way of tears. There's no death, no pain, no tears, and they come no time by it. For there is no night there. City for square. There's a street so river flows, and there is no night there. Go shall wipe away your tears. There's no death, no pain, no tears. City for square for the lamb is for the light, and there is no night there. Go shall wash up away a tears. There's no death, no pain, no fear, and they come no time by it for the rain. Faithless days lies the city for square. There is no death, no pain, no tears, no mourning, and that is our hope. Song number 99. Be no dismayed, whatever be time. Be no dismayed, we go. Be no dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Be need these wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Oh, you may need. 
what may be the test, lean upon him because he will take care of you. Even in such circumstances that we are in, let's continue leaning upon the Lord. He will take care of us. Number 476, before we change over to Kiswahili, number 476, when we change to the Kiswahili uh, hymns, eh? 476, All and solely, days are filled with sorrow and care. We sing. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very is very near. No matter what troubles your soul, no matter what pardon, Jesus is with us here. It is painful, yes, but the Lord is with us here. Nyimbo sa Christo nambali miyamocha tisini nambili. Mwa mamba wenye imara Twende Mwa mamba wenye imara Kwa koni tajificha Majiha yonadamu Yaliyo toka humu Sharia, need. 
japo fanya bidi Nikungojabo hapa chini hata kwenda kaburini raha yangu na iwe katika wewe bwana 14 uh, nyimbo za Kristo nitembee nawe bwana nitembee timbe nitembee nawe mungu ali yote to have uh, the opening prayer so I'll request that we stand up so that uh, we can pray we are praying our heavenly father this afternoon we have come gathered here together to come and uh, condole and mourn with the family of newborn and Lord, we invite your presence that, Lord, the words and the songs that are going to be spoken and sung, that it will give comfort to the family. We thank you for the journey mercies that you've given everyone, including the family, to be able to gather this afternoon here. 
And Lord, as we continue the program, Lord, we pray that your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Back, huh? We are all rising up with song number 181 as we start the program. Does Jesus care? Does Jesus care? Number 181, we sing. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain? To deeply for my dance song as the burdens press and the care, distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grace. When my way is dark with an endless flood and fear, as the day lies fast into the night, does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart. With my grave, when the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I say goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? My son, I take to you, repent, is it all to him that he seems? Oh yes, he cares, I know, he cares, his heart is touched with my grief, when the days are weary, the Lord Let us bow down our heads. Lord, as we begin our program, and as we have sung, that Jesus cares. We pray that the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ will give comfort to the family, comfort that is beyond the human understanding. And as we start our program, Lord, we invite you to lead us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good, and all the time, uh, greet your neighbor that is next to you, and tell him God loves you. God loves you, and so do I. Thank you for putting a smile next, oh, 
uh, to the neighbor that is sitting next to you. Uh, my name, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Elder Joseph Anyange, a servant of the Lord in uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church, Sukimao East Adventist Church. We have come here for a memorial service for our uh, dear brother, uh, the late Newborn Mokaya. My task is to introduce the church uh, community. But before I do that, I want to make a remark that Newborn was like a brother to me. We worked at the same place. I work at Wilson Airport. Every time in the morning, as he was going to, uh, for the flight uh, instruction, we would meet. We'd also meet in church. We also met as a community in Sukimao. I've lost a brother. Uh, having said that, I want to welcome the church community that is uh, represented here. Uh, let me start with our members, uh, Sokimao Adventist uh, members. Do you have the East members, Sokimao Adventist uh, uh, members? Are we there? Let us stand so that members can see us. Uh, we are quite a number. I know we might not, uh, we would have loved to talk or to give a speech, each one of us, but it might not be possible. Just, uh, I will uh, uh, ask, let me say two, two, uh, two persons, one lady and one gentleman to greet us on behalf of our church. Uh, I want to ask uh, Elder Ken to greet us. Thank you. I want to uh, call, I want one lady to greet us. A lady, uh, Sister, Fires. Where is Fires? Good afternoon. We can sit. Thank you for coming. Yeah, in uh, good numbers. I want to uh, welcome those churches that uh, are also in Sukimao uh, community that are represented in this uh, church. Do we have uh, people from Sokimao Central? Anybody from Sokimao Central? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to request Pastor uh, uh, Machuma to greet us. Good afternoon. Thank you. I also want to uh, ask if there's any person that I've left out from uh, uh, the churches that are around uh, Sokimao. Let me go to churches that are around, uh, that are outside Sokimao district. Do we have any person that is representing a church? Thank you. Just stand up so that we can recognize you. Uh, I will allow you to speak, both of you. 
you can say our, your name and our word. All the time, God is good and that is nature. Wow. Thank you. All the time. All the time. Thank you. May God bless you. Uh, I want to come up front. I hope I have not left some, uh, uh, any person out. That is my prayer that I have not left any person. I want to come up front at the pulpit. We have uh, uh, the servants of God that uh, God had set apart today to come and minister to us today. I'll start from my far uh, right and uh, far left on your side, uh, Elder Isaac Omeke. Greet uh, the congregation. Good afternoon. God bless you. Thank you. Next to, next to him, we have our district pastor who is going to break the bread of life uh, for us today. And uh, I know when it, his time comes, he will speak to us. I just want him to, to wave. Next to our pastor is our associate pastor. He ministers together with our past, district pastor. And uh, he is also to, uh, today with us, ministering uh, uh, to us today. His name is uh, Pastor uh, George Maneno. I normally forget the first name, but today I've gotten it. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Be blessed. I think we are moving on well. I want to, at this moment, I want to request uh, the MC of today to come up front. We have uh, several uh, 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 sections that we will, uh, uh, that he will address. He will introduce the family, he will introduce the friends, and uh, at the school where newborn was working. Thank you, and may God bless you. Amen. I want to introduce myself. Uh, uh, sorry. I want to introduce him before he comes. Sorry for that, uh, Mishap. Uh, his name is called Joash uh, Nyasende Karibu. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon once more. I have a lot to say, but there is very short time to do, and I will choose not to say anything because you equally have a chance to speak. Uh, there's always rules of engagement, which I think is good to make them clear to all of us. One, we may not have chance to give to all of us. So we'll just give a few of you chance to speak, but please feel recognized even if you don't get that chance to speak, because time may not allow us to speak, all of us. Number two, if you are given chance to speak, kindly be as brief as you can so that we can accommodate your brother who is going to speak. So when you're given chance, please don't exploit everything because there are other people speaking after you. Number three, we are going to speak using this microphone. All of us, whoever is coming to speak, will use this microphone, not this one. 
So when I call upon you, kindly uh, take that chance and utilize the moment. I think that is so clear. Uh, I'll start with newborn's friends. Rafa, where are you? Kindly come with all the friends and we'll give uh, just two chances for you to speak. As he comes, if newborn was to be here today, he can for sure tell us and confirm to us that this is his best friend. If you knew newborn, you could not meet him twice or three years without meeting Raphael. That one, I stand to be corrected. And this young man uh, trying to hold the microphone is a true copy of the original. That is uh, newborn is uh, blood. Raphael, take it up and kindly take the shortest time possible. Switch it on. Fundi Omitambo, can we have this mic on? All right. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon once again. Uh, as just you've been told, my name is uh, Raphael John. To me, newborn was not even uh, a friend, as it's been said. Um, really, that was my brother. We've shared a lot. We've gone through so many things together. If you go to their school, school here in 99, most of them knew me as his brother, actually. So, as even we here to mourn newborn, we just ask for your prayers, that you may put the family in prayers, something that has come as a shock to us. Didn't have any expectation to such kind of a gathering today. But anyway, it's God's will. We just need prayers. Now, on a quick note, I'll try to introduce some of the friends that are here. Uh, I can start with Humphrey. His name is Humphrey. He's a childhood friend to newborn. They grew up together back at home. Then uh, to the two gentlemen, uh, one of us is our treasurer. He's called Ronnie. I don't know, Ronnie, you can just put up your hand. That is Ronnie. And this other one is called uh, Jibril. We were together in the same high school, Kanyawanga High School. So that's where our friendship grew up to now. They've just represented the, just a small part of our high school. Then uh, we also have a small business community. As you know, we were having a business together with Newborn. We have a small company. So the two our, are our business friends. Uh, number one is uh, Loisa. She also come from Kisi, but she's also our, our good friend. Loisa, you can just carry up your hand. Maybe people put to see you. Then uh, I have Lovina. She's also our business friend. Uh, Lovina, you can just carry up your hand for people to see. Okay, so these are just a few friends who came to be with us on this day. We thank all of you, everyone who has taken his time to be part of this. We've not taken this for granted. We are so, so happy. It's not easy for anyone to come and leave their work just to come be with us. But you've taken your special and precious time to be with us. From us, we just say thank you and may God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raphael, and your friends for such a, uh, a tribute. 
you've spent uh, the right uh, amount of minutes. I think uh, you, you are holding the trophy as at now. I am yet to know who will uh, take it up. Newborn uh, and his young family uh, were staying at Siokimau. And as neighbors, they usually have other people who are neighbors and will be so selfish if you can't let them uh, give their tribute. So we are calling upon the neighbors, led by Walter Orato. Where is Walter? Yes. Majirani wa newborn. Tunaomba kwa upole mje. As kama mpo, tunaomba mje upesi. Maybe uh, members of uh, our prayer cell. I think we, if we narrowed it down to members of the prayer cell, it makes it a little bit more exact. Members of the prayer cell, low, uh, lower community. Thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, once again. Uh, let me also uh, follow in the steps of uh, 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 the speaker who uh, came before me. I'll take the opportunity to introduce uh, members of, of the press cell. My name is Walter Orato, as has been said. Next to me is uh, my wife, Jacqueline Maeri. Uh, next to Jacqueline is uh, Sister Priska Maiz, uh, Elder Isaac Omeke, and uh, Sister Deborah Chisang. Now, um, it gets a little bit uh, difficult and emotional to speak about uh, some of these things. Uh, but for me, I've known newborn for just about uh, under three years, I think, or just about two or so years. But if you ask me, uh, newborn is a model of a child that you'd want to have. I call him so because uh, if he was my son, then he would be like my fourth one or something like that. So uh, this is the kind of a son that you'd want to have. Newborn was both good in nature, but also very good in nature. Uh, I think the, uh, the parents must have done a very good job in bringing newborn up. Because at that age, in fact, we have just been speaking out here uh, with uh, one of the elders, and I was asking me, at 26, uh, what were you doing? And I'm, I'm struggling to find out what I was doing at 26. But at 26, new, newborn was already through with college. Uh, he was already married, already had a child. Those are not very common milestones that you'd find. But as members of the same prayer cell, and members of the same church, there is not a single thing that those of us who are old enough were doing that at his age he would shy away from doing. I happen, I'm privileged to uh, be teaching in one of the colleges in town, and children or people at that age, uh, when you ask them uh, even why they are in college, many of them tell you they don't know. They don't even know why they are in college. Uh, and if they know, they say they have been forced by their parents to come to college. But here is a 26-year-old uh, boy who already knew what he wanted. I know it's painful, but I know it's also God's will. So to, uh, to the newborn family, uh, we can only help to pray for you, take heart, and God will not let you down. To newborn friends, other relatives who may not be here, let us take it to God in prayer. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you, Walter, and your group for such a, a commendable use of uh, the few minutes. Uh,
that is an a cappella group. Where are you? Kuna choir up. Yeah, cappella. Are you somewhere? Naomba mje. Just come. The a cappella group. You got uh, a chance to do one item. Kindly do. <laughs> yes. Uh, the tension is so high, so we can. Uh, Hello, good afternoon. Uh, we were to be four here, but two are not yet here. But we can do a song. We can sing. So we're going to do a hymn, 633. And we'll ask that you put it on the screen that we sing together. 633. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Uh, you'll join us together. Uh, we'll do a song later, I hope, because our friends are not yet here, but we'll sing this hymn together. Sing the wondrous, let's sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing. Shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will over spread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all to heaven what a day of rejoicing that to be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory let us then be true and faithful Trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the thoughts of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing as shout the victory. On what to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the party gets 
gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Soon we all get to heaven and there'll be no more shedding of tears there and we'll sing because Christ will be there with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a wonderful item. Uh, the father to newborn is known as James Omote Mokaya. I am not just saying that for, for nothing. But uh, there is a group that has come specifically to condole with uh, James Omote, who is the father to newborn. This is uh, the 1990 Kenyatta University cohort. Those who are classmates to Mze James Omote. Kindly, but expeditiously, you come in front and uh, you give a tribute. 1990, many of you were not born yet, and some of us were born. Just a minute, you can use this, okay. this one. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. For the first time, I've made a mistake going to the public. My father was a church elder for 60 years, and he always told me never go to the public until you have reflected what you did the whole week. I'm so sorry. It's okay. We were in the same class with James Omote, with the Ruth. We were a class of 175 from Kisi and Yamira. We are surviving 155, and we have a good group. The name Newborn, it's us who know it, because Newborn was our chaplain at the university, both the University of Nairobi and KU. So when you talk about Newborn, the man that the lady is named, it gives us big memories because newborn always inspired us. Yesterday, when I was thinking about James and what one of has just said here about newborn, if for sure, I've never met newborn. If for sure newborn is like the father, that's how James was at university. We were joking with him. Matiang was in our class. So I was telling Matiang last night, you, James, and about five of you, you were waiting for the second coming in 1990 of Jesus and God. Some of us, when we were in university, and this is can tell you, we, we postponed about attending the church because we had just reached the university. We forgot, but James, and others, and Ruth and uh, Matiang, they never forgot that there were seven Adventists. Uh, a young man of 26 years. What I've come to reflect is that good people don't live for long. Good people don't live for long. But for us kisses, if somebody dies and leaves a kid, we have hope. But more than that, we have hope that one day we will meet newborn, in the second coming. Our class, we are very supportive of each other. The whole week, for the last 10 days, they have been visiting uh, Omota at home, and I want them to continue. And, and let's pray for the family. Let's pray for the family of James, and let's pray for the kid who has been left. Dead is a mystery. We can't understand it. And being gender sensitive, let me allow, she's also my boss, at government, although I've retired, she has been our director of human resource at public service. 
She's a lady that we all, we all admired, but we never told her. Good afternoon, congregation. Just want to give my sincere condolence, and I represent all of us, the class of 1990, and our condolence to our brother and friend, James Omote Mukaya, and the entire family. Very sincere condolence to the family of newborn. And I can assure the congregation that there's something in a name. Newborn, whatever the name was got from, turned out to be the newborn we knew, our chaplain in the university, a man of God, very neat, true in his journey of life. And that's what newborn, the later stand out to be. We really thank God for the opportunity he gave the family to be with the newborn. Just like my brother has indicated, good people don't live long. Probably it's because they don't need to sin. The longer you live, the more exposed you are to the toils and turmoils of this world, and they may rub you the wrong way and you may end up sinning. So we take it with a stride and a positive mind that though he's gone to soon, probably he has been saved from the troubles, the turmoils and sin of this world. We just hope that the family will be able to be consoled, to feel comforted by God, and to, be, to get that positivism. Mm, it's not easy. It's not as I put it. It's tough. But speak to yourself. You are the best counselor for yourself. Have a meeting with yourself. And I am speaking more on the people this side. And if you do that, you'll be able to overcome and forge ahead and move looking forward that one day, one morning, you'll meet newborn and speak to him. But he was such a fine, neat person. From the talk from his father and from what you know, he was a nice, fine person. These are the kind of people you see, they rested. May God give you the strength to overcome this awkward moments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, may, we may not get enough to say about newborn. Uh, newborn before he became a captain, he must have gone through some training and that is uh, the 99th school, flying school, if I can put it right. And fortunately, that's where he got a job. It's not easy to get a job where you've schooled unless you are, you are one of the fine products of such a school. It's my assumption. The school leadership and community will come and affirm what I'm saying, if it's true, or they will tell us to the contrary. Kindly, I call upon uh, Eva and your group to come forth and uh, have a chance to give you a tribute.
Good afternoon, everyone. You can, uh, you can have it. You can remove it and just hold it to the mic. Yeah, it will be easier that way. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon once again. As you can see, we are the administration, management, and the family of the 99th Flying School, where a newborn schooled as a student and very well ended up being one of our best instructors. I'm going to introduce the administration, our management. I will start with our accountable manager, Major Amin. And to my left, we have our head of training, Colonel Ali. We also have our ground instructors. Raise your hands, ground instructors. Our flight instructors, raise your hands. Our management and, and your group. Our former CFI. And our students. Kindly our students, raise your hand. You can wave to the crowd. So I'm going to give our head of training the microphone to say a word before we read the tribute. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think uh, I'm not used to uh, this kind of uh, service because of the faith I come from. So please bear with me in case uh, I make some mishaps here and there. Uh, as mentioned, my name is uh, Kanul Ali. I am the head of training at 99's Flying School. And uh, on my behalf, and uh, on behalf of the management of 99s and the 99s fraternity, I wish to take this opportunity to convey our heartfelt condolences to the family of Mze Joseph Omote, Mama Omote, the family of uh, newborn, friends and relative, relatives following you know, the demise of our son, our student, our instructor, Captain Newborn Mokaya. It's indeed been very tough on us for the last couple of weeks uh, because I have been in this industry for a long time. I started my aviation career in 1995 at the Kenya Air Force. My colleague here, Major Amin, started even earlier. And of course, over the years, I've lost friends in the aviation industry. I have lost colleagues, but none has hit me this hard because the two persons on board those air that aircraft were not ordinary beings. They were both exemplary in whatever they did. And therefore, as people say, there were only two, you know, that person for us there were more than two. If I start with a student, her name was Mariam Omar. Mariam was not only our student, she was equally our daughter. Just like every other student that comes to 99s becomes our son or our daughter. With newborn, he was initially our student and therefore, by extension, our son. And because he was such a fine uh, young man, when he completed his training, we did not hesitate to give him a chance to become an instructor. And being an instructor, I'll tell you, without mincing my words, that he served with dedication. He was a team player, and uh, coped well with everybody. And if you'll allow me, I know we are short on time, 
but I would like to mention one or two qualities about him, which honestly, as a person who having been in this industry for a long time, and a trainer as well, that made me uh, like him so much. He was unlike the current breed of young men and women. Among the many qualities I found in newborn was one, that newborn was always, always smartly dressed. His white shirt, I'll tell you, was whiter than white. Always well ironed. No stains whatsoever. His hair was neither long nor short. You know, when we go to fly, we put on headsets. And those of us who keep hair, I know I've gone bald over the years. The headset has a way of deforming your hair. I guess Captain Newborn always carried a comb with him. Because I've never seen his hair deformed because of a headset. So that was how neat he was. His shoes, of course, he liked the moccasin type. I have one pair of the same. And on one of the occasions, he told me, Eh, Mualimu, umeanza kuvaa kama kijana. And, and my answer, very jokingly, was, you know, mimi ni muze kijana. And he said, ya kweli, Mualimu, we ni muze, muze kijana. So that is how well turned out he was all the time. In addition, newborn will not carry a beak in his pocket. He will carry very fine pens, the designer pens. Newborn did not put on any ordinary watch. He, has, he had a taste for class. If you doubt me, please have a look at his portrait. It is right out there. I'm not making it up. And believe you me, you will confirm what I'm telling you. Number two, newborn was very respectful. Cheerful all the time. He won't hesitate to say hi to you. And because I was an instructor, he would always call me, hi, sir. And maybe to take you back, my history with newborn goes a long way, back in sometime 2018, I guess somewhere around July. I gave him the first solo. I think the pilots know what I mean. This is a stage in the training where the pilot is led to fly on his own. So I was the one on one Sunday evening who let him take a plane by himself to go and fly. So that is the history I have with Nibo. So I know him more than many do because before I release a student for a first solo, Many of them are here, that uh, they know what I take them through, because it is my responsibility to ensure that the student I'm releasing is fit enough, safe enough to carry out that exercise and come back unharmed. It doesn't come easy on the instructor, it doesn't come easy on the student. How to ensure that he is professionally competent to do that. I have to ensure that he has the ability to assess risks and put in mitigation measures. I have to ensure that he is able to make decisions, decisions that are sound based on knowledge. And most importantly, he must maintain a cool head in the event things go wrong. The aviation industry, uh, those who might not be um, well versed with it, has a lot of variables. In the morning it is cool, in the afternoon it is hot. In the morning the flight is smooth, in the afternoon it is rough. Sometimes it is windy, sometimes it's not windy. So there are a lot that changes. 
in the course of just one flight. And therefore, before I release you, I must make that overall assessment to determine that you'll be able to address all these scenarios in the right way. So that is how well I knew him before I released him. And of course, newborn did not disappoint. He did an excellent job. And all through his training, he's always been a good guy to the extent he became an instructor. Now, going back to the qualities I noticed in him, is that, of course, very respectful. But even then, newborn spoke his mind. When he felt he doesn't agree with you, he will tell you in a respectful manner, with a smile. We'll always have meetings as instructors, and he'll tell you, Malimu Mimi, Noana Hio Sesawa. Smiling without being rude. And if you can't convince him, believe you me, he is not a pushover. He will stand his ground respectfully, calling you sir. And, and that is how, how he was. And, and we really liked him for that. And a story he shared with me, maybe the family might know this, that newborn has been applying for a visa to the U.S. Uh, he went there the first time, and he will come back asking me for an off, can I go and do that? So he went the first time, and uh, he came back in the evening very disappointed and said, you know what, these guys uh, refused to give me the visa. What was the issue? He said, I do not know, because I talked so well, and Adjustin to me, in the next pool was a guy who was, you know, saying funny, funny things, and they let him get the visa, yet they denied me. I told him, take heart, don't worry, you continue with your, with your life. Then he was given a second chance. This time around, they equally again rejected him because they said, you've come back too soon for the, for the interview again. Uh, Madam, I guess I'm, I'm saying what, what really happened. And they told me, you know what, sir? This time again, they told me you've come in too soon, but I gave them a piece of my mind. And I told the lady, you're not being fair. So I looked at it and I said, you know, this is a very bold young man. Ordinarily, when we go for these visa applications, we all get timid. And we always are the mercy of the, you know, the visa officer. But here was a young man that could not take it, you know, uh, it down that easily. He had to give them a piece of his mind. And that is exactly how he was. He will not hesitate to call you to order in a respectful manner. Uh, to tell you, I think this is not right. Number three is uh, Neobon was a hard worker. Very hard working indeed. And uh, Mr. James will tell you that even when he had challenges with his fees, we never stopped him. We let him continue without even James talking to us. The other day when we met, he said, you know what, I've never been here. And even when my son wanted to become an instructor, I told him, I have no resources. What will you do? And he told me, you know what, I have talked to the management and all is well. That is courtesy of him, not courtesy of, of, of the museum. Because of the qualities he had, we felt that this is a young man that requires a helping hand. And we did so without any reference to anybody. I knew also during uh, his time with us that he had a lot of side hustles. And one particular one which we joked about it is, 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 is one that I know of. But I'm happy to hear that he was in other businesses and had business partners. So Newborn was a hard worker. He used to, to do Uber business, maybe to share this with you. And I'll tell him over the weekend, ah, how was the Uber one? You look like you made good money. And we laugh about it. So it used to be a part of a way to encourage the young man. So it is not easy getting people of uh, these day and age who are that hard work. And finally, and most important about Newborn, was that he was a staunch follower of the SDA church. Newborn will not come to school on a Saturday. Come rain, come sunshine. That is who Newborn was. So making him an instructor was no mistake. It was deliberate. We saw what this young man was capable of. 
And because of that, we made him an instructor and he served diligently as an instructor. I wish one of his students would be given a chance uh, to say the experiences they have had. And, and therefore, uh, we grieve with you. Uh, we are equally in shock. Some of us were wishing that this is just but a bad dream, that one day we'll wake up to the reality that nothing happened. But of course, this is the will of God, and we'll just have to accept it. Sad as it may be, I think we equally need to thank God for giving us that opportunity to have lived, to have worked, to have stayed with newborn. He was indeed a very fine gentleman. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was our head of training. And on behalf of 99's family, I would love to read our tribute. We gather to remember our dear colleague, Captain Newborn Mokaya Omote. Though his passing grieves us, we celebrate a life well lived, recalling his kindness and passion. As a student, Newborn pursued his love for flying to becoming a respected instructor who trained others with passion and compassion. He taught us that true success lies not in possessions, but in the relationships. We will surely miss you. Fly with the angels. Captain Newborn Mokaya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Na sante sana kwa kuomboleza nasi. Uh, I know this was uh, your part to play, but kindly, with your kind permission, allow me give a chance to one of the students that Newborn had a chance to train. Just one. As you get me the name or the person, a student, Siokmau Choir, kindly come for an item. Fundi wa mitambo tusaidia sauti kwa microphone hii. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tutu Minor. I was newborn student um, uh, for the past year, since uh, January 2023. 20, um, I think he happened to be the first instructor that I, that I met. Um, he walked into class and I, uh, for context, I'm 29. I may not look it. I don't have the height, but uh, that's my age. I was 28 then, uh, and I think he was 24. And I realized almost instantly that he was younger than me, so I was in shock. It didn't seem... <laughs> Uh, possible that someone as young as him could be could be leading uh, you know someone as old as me um, but almost instantly he he cemented just how just how knowledgeable how intelligent how made to be a captain that he was um, 
and I knew from then that I wanted him to be my instructor throughout. And so fate would have it, he was also my flight instructor. And um, so I, I was able to foster a really close relationship with him to the point where my parents um, would constantly call him, not for my sake, but also, also to find out how he was and uh, whether they could meet as well. I feel like I've lost a friend. It's not easy. But I know he came to do what he was meant to do. And the impact. The impact that he left will be felt for a very long time. So to newborn, I know you're watching us from heaven. Fly with the angels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Waswaili wanasema, aisifuye mvua, imemnyea. Uh, we wouldn't have known how impactful our brother was until we listened to one of his students. Karibu kwae. Kwa 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 kwa
kila usiku Una asubuhi kwa kila usiku Pale juwali takapo chomo za tena ndugu Usiku uja poku wali mrefu Hakika asubuhi inakuja Asubuhi lote litatoweka Unapoona ukiwa maisha ni kunduka Kuna asubuhi kwa kila usiku Asante kwa wimbo huo wa faraja Natumaini kwamba japo usiku uzidi bado kutapambazuka na asubuhi yaja na kwa misingi hiyo basi tunatumainia siku ambapo asubuhi tafika tutakapo shiriki na wote wale ndugu zetu waliolala wakimtumainia bwana ndugu Captain Niubo nakiwa mmoja wao. Ni nafasi ninayochukua kwa kuwaita familia. Kindly come up front. We are running against time. I am tempted to speak in uh, in a language that is spoken in heaven. As they come, muna kuja hapa niliko. My brother, Bogita Ungeri, kindly come. You have a minute and a half uh, to speak. This is a brother to to the late. In our language, we call them brothers, but in this other language, they call them cousins. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Director of Ceremonies. My name is Bugita Ungeri. The late is my cousin and at the same time is my nephew. I think the father understands this very well. I don't want to waste time but I just want to point out on three key things and the first one I want to also register my condolences to my uncle James Omote I know it is very painful, very, very painful to lose your child. I may not say whether it is biblical or it is African, but it is good when children parry their parents than parents parrying their children. So we know how this has happened and uh, it is very, very painful. The lead person from the school has explained very well, and I'm happy that uh, he is a colonel retired from the Kenya Defense Forces. And I know what the pilots of the Kenya Defense Forces are made of. And indeed, that is why the young newborn picked very well a distinguished captain. And there is that evidence. Speakers have come here and they have
pointed out that good people don't live longer. So I am surprised now, do I become a bad person so that I can live longer? What do I do? Because uh, this is a gentleman, this is a man who was focused. He had his own vision. And the qualities that have been pointed out here, that is what their parents, even the whole family, the Mokaya family, we know that is what they are made of. Very humble. They love even assisting the community where they can. So I register my condolences uh, to the family. The second thing is that I also want to thank, I, I was sharing the Nairobi team so that we can put our heads together and ensure that we have given our young newborn a befitting send off. So I wanted to thank that committee, um, uh, the Nairobi committee. Let us keep on. And thirdly, so that we can save time, I also wanted to announce that tomorrow, tomorrow we'll have a funds drive at Provisional Center, starting from 4.30 to around 8.30. So kindly, I request you to join us as good friends. My friend here, Mr. Sagero, and other friends, you know them, let us, um, come together in one accord and assist the family because we know what it takes to make the funeral um, ceremony um, successful. Thank you so much and may God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother and uncle, Bogita Ungeli. I come up front, kindly assist me with this mic and uh, a few others. For the interest of time, uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to make it short in uh, the shortest time possible. Uh, before we even say who is who, I want to invite my nephew, Iman, to give a tribute. This young man, uh, they were good friends with uh, his uncle, who is my brother, and uh, I know the keyboard this young man is using right now, it was a gift from his uncle. And uh, it so happened, son, just take heart. We give him a chance to read a tribute. This man is uh, the secretary, uh, a group, with us. This young man uh, is reading a tribute and we will talk after him. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, George. Well done. If you have a Bible, can you open James chapter 1, verse 12? Because as it says, great blessings belong to those who are tempted and remain faithful after they have proved their faith. God will give them reward, the reward of eternal life. God promised this to the people God promised this to the people who loved him. So from what I read in this verse, that I should have hope that I'll meet him once in heaven. So, yeah. 
So just continue loving each other as brothers. And also, if you have a Bible, open Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, continue loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. So we should just continue loving each other, knowing that we'll meet him in heaven. We should have hope. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, and bear with us. It is that emotive. Uh, I'll introduce a few and give chance to a few to speak because of uh, time and uh, the emotions. Uh, Susan, come. Just come. Job. Uh, who else? This is uh, Susan. Is there someone coming? This is Susan Bosibori. This is our son, Eman. This is the brother to Susan, Job Moturi. This is uh, his son together with uh, his wife, Philnik. Uh, this uh, young man is called uh, Momanyi. Momanyi, famously known as Mo, is named after the grandfather. So, uh, newborn his father and uh, Job and Susan his father they were brothers so I don't know what you call them in English you will say they are cousins in our language we, we don't use cousins we say these are sisters and brothers to newborn this young beautiful queen is known as just wife, thank you. You can uh, take your positions. I call upon uh, Martin and the likes. Sasa nini kujia? Kujeni? Nyaboke? Emmanuel? This is another group. That one is known as uh, Naomi Bosibori. Bosibori is a common name in our family, so you may get them like every other time. That one is Martin Mosetti. This is Bernard Nyangwechi. This is Alice. Uh, this is Nyawoke, uh, second youngest in this group. This is uh, Obed Nyanumba. This one is Emmanuel Atuti and um, Joash Nyasende. We belong in this group. This group, our mothers are sisters to Omote James. Omote James is the father to newborn Omote. So we are cousins in uh, that language. But to us, we are sisters and brothers. You can take your positions. Uh, Naomi Kwapi, wewe umefanya makosa, just come. Uh, this is my Shemeji, husband to Naomi. We were almost losing cows if we could not introduce him who could get punished. Uh, thank you so much, my Shemeji. Uh, then uh, we, no, Kujo Kwanza. Uh, Jared, 
كم uh, of all the cousins that are here today Jared is the oldest and the most experienced si waswahili wanasema kuishi kwingi ni kuona mengi sasa kama ameishi kutuliko wengine si ameona mengi i will give him a chance to speak sometime this young man he was uh, my classmate in nursery school back in the days and he is my cousin baba ya hawa na uh, baba ya newborn they are first cousins and so we become cousins but i have severally said we don't have cousins in our language we have brothers okay ah uh, you can take your positions uh uh this is matara brian he is my shemeji is a brother to newborn's wife and this one is a brother to simon is uh, the immediate follower to uh, immaculate so i want you all to mwisho mwisho this one and this one they belong to this one <laughs> are we together yes so thank you take your positions i am now starting giving people a uh, chance to speak uh this young man uh he ananizidi urefu na ndevu nikijaribu naweza fuga ndevu lakini urefu sitafikia si ndio i saw this man akizaliwa na kumbeba i can tell you the story so if i can tell you the story about this one how much more about newborn because newborn is now uko chini he is elfas actually he is pastor elfas nyabuti omote he is the elder brother to newborn he landed uh, this morning at around 11 so if you see him not so stable bear with him he hasn't had enough time to uh, to ventilate okay uh, welcome brother and uh, take heart uh, uh, i think i'm almost done this one is uh, immaculate kerubo oroi but uh, when we change documentation and everything it becomes mokaya taking the name of newborn mokaya this young man come 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 we go he likes travel so when you tell him come we go he just comes he is uh, innocent as he is kindly pray for us pray for him it is trying moments he is edin omote mokaya named uh, after the grandfather who is alive nowadays we name people who are still existing right yes so i'll give my sister to just say a word just a word just a word good afternoon first i'd like to say thank you for making your way here for leaving your work and coming here one thing is Colonel Ali was talking I remembered something that Nyobon used to tell me that uh, I knew him as somebody who is very strict 
he feared him, but he, to, he always told me that was like a motivation to him. I remember one time he used to joke like, do you know that I'm a boy from the village? No, my, my, my instructor, uh, who is uh, Colonel Ali, uh, could tell me when we fly <laughs> that <laughs> you're very, okay, that's not, uh, no offense, you're very stupid. Actually, your dad will take back his fees. That's like, he told me that was a motivation. It's not like he meant it. Because, you see, flying, it's about life and death. So if I tell you, like, you're flying very well, what will you do tomorrow? Will you be able to fly? You'll be very overconfident, isn't it? So he used to tell me, I'm a boy from the village, and I used to tell him, people have never seen pilots. Myself, I couldn't have seen a pilot if it were not him. So we used to joke with my sister, who is in absentia, that uh, my sister could call him and tell him, Unajua tujawa yon a pilot? People, we don't, uh, I mean, uh, from where we come from, we don't have pilots. I remember when I went home, sometimes when you're seated with people, people could say, eh, kumbi hapa ndo pilot alikuwa natoka. Because I don't know what we view as pilots. Is it meant for people who travel outside? So you don't, it doesn't sit well with us that a pilot could come from the village who was very determined. He loved aviation. I could tell him on weekends, do you have to go to work even on Sunday as early as six? And he could tell me, I just love flying. It's just a hobby. Uh, sometimes he could make jokes like, I, I love sleeping. So he could, he could tell me, just like you love sleeping, I love flying. So he had passion in aviation. He had bigger dreams. I don't know if the young man can just hold the legacy and I hope one day he'll be a captain because myself, I'm so traumatized. I don't know, I just have a phobia for flights right now. When I first learned about his death, I couldn't believe because I knew him as somebody who was very strong, somebody who could fight. When I first read the message, it was all over the news. When I first read, I just said, it's not newborn. The newborn I know could not allow himself to die in a flight. I'm sure he fought for those who saw him. <laughs> he must have fought for his life. How I hope that God could just let him for even a minute to tell us what happened, because we don't know. I just saw him that morning at five as I prepared to leave for work. We were up with the sun. We prayed together that morning. And I remember telling him, don't leave before I get into the house, because I feared. And the moment I opened the door, I closed the gate and opened the door, he left. I didn't know that was the last moment I'd see him alive. <laughs> Some few hours later, <laughs> newborn was no more. <laughs> Just pray for us. We have so many questions to God. Why did he allow him <laughs> to go that fast? Many you say that, that went down in history, they've never heard of a collision of the planes. People can talk, people can doubt his experience. I'm not a pilot, I don't work in that line, but what I can assure you, you won't love flying. He actually had bought a, I don't know what you call it, a joystick or a simulator in the house. So when he comes back at night, we could fly, the three of us. He could show us on how to fly. And uh, uh, as Colonel said, he had so many hassles. Newborn really loved farming. If you come to our compound, we also have poultry. He had love for aquariums. 
he always consulted me on so many things. I don't know why he didn't consult me well. I was ready for him to leave. I've asked God so many questions. At least he could have given me a sign that he's going so that I say a proper goodbye. It hurts saying goodbye for somebody that I laughed with the whole night we laughed. I don't know whether that was a goodbye from him because that day we shared a lot. We laughed the whole night only for him to leave and never come back. Thank you. Uh, it's better that way than not speaking. I want to believe. Uh, these two, uh, they were aunt and uncle, brother to James Omote, who is the father to newborn, uh, this one, and this is the sister. This is number 10 out of 10. And this is number 9 out of 10. So, number 8, sorry, there's number 9 here. So, number 1, all through, our kuja, wengi wa konyumbani. We have them as a representation of other members. I'll give a chance to them. Just a word. It's hard, I know, but it's necessary if we can speak. Mungu ni muema. Nasi kuzote. Eh, hakika tuko na uchungu sana hata hatuna hatuna rua ya kueleza yale ya koroni mwetu but eh, jambo moja ningependa kuwaomba ya kwamba muweze kutuombea sababu maombi yataweza kutusimamisha yataweza kutukomfort kwa hivyo ombi langu ni ya kwamba mnapofanya maombi tafadhali mtukumbuke kwa maombi Na mungu awabariki kwa kuspare your time. Sieti ya mungu wana kazi ya kufanya ama shuguli za kufanya. Mukaona ni vema muuje hapa kwa ajili ya kutufariji. Mungu aweze kuwabariki. Good afternoon. My name is Lamek. Ongera Mukaya. Newborn, his middle name is, is named after my father. So I live in America and uh, <clears throat> one thing I remember about to live uh, about Newborn, for the first time in a long time, I had to look for a friend to pick me off the, from the airport. Always, always, all I do is just send him my, my itinerary, and that's it. It tells me I'll be there. I was once in a swale class, and uh, some of you have been too. And there's a saying that, Chema uh, Hakidumu. I don't know how to translate that in English, but Chema Hakidumu. So, Something that's precious never lives long. I have a lot, if I get a chance to talk about live about uh, newborn, but uh, for now, I will thank you for coming. Thank you for taking your time and sacrifice. But I, I'll, I'll take these um, few things I love to talk about him. He likes animals. He, uh, the animals of all, like you come, you find a duck here, you go around, you find another aquarium here, 
he has even a, some cows at his age. Those old guys here who know to have a cow is not easy. You have to struggle to tame a cow. But uh, as I speak, you got a few. So one of the instructors, uh, I think, he knew him very well, very well. He was a very neat guy, always very neat, we call it um, sharp. Here in, uh, in Kenya we say smart, smart, I think, but he was always, he likes being very neat and he doesn't like things done halfway. If I instruct him or ask him to do something, if he's not done well, he say, uncle, that's not the way to do it. I'll take my time and I'll make sure it's done well. So, in brief, it's a painful, death is always painful, but this one I think is more painful because of its nature. But I'll take this time and thank all of you for taking this time to condole with us. And as you go back, don't forget praying for us. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle. We, I call upon uh, the brother-in-law, just a word. Good afternoon. Yeah, my brain, I'm Brian Matara. <coughs> Newborn was like my brother. <laughs> I knew Newborn when he was the size of the son, who is my nephew. Was when he was very young, we used to sleep together when the father used to go to university to further studies. <coughs> we grew together up to when he was coming to university. The first person who consulted which course can I take is me. Is me. Then told me I want to take aviation. I'm <coughs> to So all through, we have been knowing newborn has been my person. Even newborn wakes up, knows my lifestyle, how we grew, and where we are. When newborn was marrying my sister, he asked me, I remember that time he called me in the afternoon, and I said, Brian, I would call you in the evening. Then he said, I would call you in the evening. Then told me, I said, I would call you in the evening. I said, I would call you in the evening. I said, I would call you in the evening. At your young age. So, I've given a tea. I take because it's somebody we were growing together. I know the father and the mother. So this guy, the last time I saw him is on channel when they were coming from home with my sister here. I work in Narok. Then I told them, it was early in the morning, I told them, you will not go to Nairobi. Mukifika Narok, Musimame, I get out of the house and come and greet you. That's the last time I saw newborn face to face. I've lost a very serious person who was having a very bright future. Very bright future. To me talk ambari na awa jama na tune song ambele. The only thing I believe prayers will work. Wherever he has gone, one day we'll meet again. Newborn, wherever you are, Know that the family you have left up behind will take care. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Uh, you can take your seats because I, I can see it's overwhelming. Take your seats, except a few who are here to speak. I, I call upon... Uh, she's... Uh, asked to read the tribute from the uh, father and mother-in-law. So kindly do it. Okay, church, good afternoon. First, I take the opportunity to thank the friends, the church, 
and the school to stand with us, especially during this time we are in the morning. I don't have much to say other than thanking you. To my side, I've known newborn since 2014, January. Newborn when he joined the school of pilot, he could come back home. He was more of a brother, not just a brother-in-law. He could come home with special gifts. He could buy a watch for me, a necklace, of which I'm aware he never bought to my sister. Angel letter kama kazawad. I have a good nail cutter, which I'm using from 2017 till today. So, as a sister-in-law to the wife, I'm missing him, and I will miss him greatly. Being an elder sister to the family, I'm standing here on behalf of the family, of the parents, the parents to Immaculate. I'm reading the tribute from the parents, and this is what our mother and our father said. Mm, our mother used to call newborn Aka newborn. Aka newborn in our community is a young, as a child, is a child. We are aware from the Bible, a child is somebody who is righteous. If God comes today, mm, attend a bingun. So this is what the parents said, more than a son-in-law, he was cherished and lovely family member. His laughter illuminated our lives, his kindness unwaveringly. His absence will create a void that will be impossible to fill. Yet, his spirit will reside eternally in our hearts. We will hold dear the memories we shared, drawing inspiration from his legacy. We will miss him, our dear son and a friend, until we meet in the glory, parents in law. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are about to finish and uh, I'm requesting Naomi just a word. If you can take a minute, it will be so prudent. Okay, praise God, church. All members, praise God. We thank God so much for your presence. And we don't take this for granted. May God bless you. If I will say a word about newborn, newborn loved the family. He loved everybody at his or her own measure or level. As uh, others have remarked that um, he was hardworking indeed. He was so determined, I can attest to that. There's a time I called him asked him, newborn, can I, get, can I get somebody to help me in some work, in some business? Somebody to keep some business for me? Then he told me, sis, that's a small thing. And in a little while, in a minute, in, in a, within an hour, he was at my place of work. Asked me, show me the place of your business. I took him there. And then when he looked around, he told me, I have a nice boy who can do this work. And indeed, he brought the boy. That man was so ambitious. My mom is uh, somewhat sickling. When he comes over for his, uh, for her appointments, before even I organize myself on how I can fetch her or I can pick her from town, Newborn loved his family. He loved the wife and the son. They were ever in company. 
They were ever in company. A very obedient young man. We've lost an asset, but we know God knows why at this time. He was our treasurer. He was that type of person who won't beg. Hata kufuatilie tia ujatuma pesa fulani. And kwa ile imebaki ya top. Na namaliza kazi. But we know it is well. God knows why. Though ningum, we've lost a great man of God. We usually have meetings as a family, as sisters and brothers. He may be in attendance on his own together with the family. Like the last, it was on 24th. Most of us didn't make for our meetings. We usually have, Nairobi, we call ourselves Nairobi Block. Mamokeira family. He was in attendance on his own together with the family. He could always be in meetings. He never failed. That's the type of man we've lost. But God knows why. It's God. Our prayer, our request, continue praying with us so that um, those of us who are alive may make our ways and be ready for our death when it comes because nobody knows the time, nobody knows the hour. May God bless us. Thank you, sister. Uh, Brother Nyabuti. First of all, I just want to say thank you to each one of you for being here. In my family, there's three boys. There's me as the oldest. Uh, there is Crispus. And then there is a new one. I stand here today as a representation of me and my second brother, Chris. And wherever, Chris, you are, I just want to commend your incredible strength. And as I represent you in honor of our brother, that I pray that pray that you will find strength as I also look for strength. I have been traveling for the better part of the last two days um, to be here. In many ways, I actually envy a lot of you because you had what I didn't have with my brother, which is time. I left to the U.S. when I was a very, at a young age, and uh, I left newborn at age, he was probably around age five, and 20 years lapsed. It's one thing to grieve and um, to grieve what you've lost. It's another thing to grieve what you could have had. And um, I was fighting so hard to get my brother to join me in the US. And so we tried, we tried over and over again, time and time again, because I know how talented he is. He, he was a fine pilot, an incredible pilot. When I was here last October, uh, we had the opportunity of of uh, going on a flight with him. So he took my brother and I on a flight. 
and I recorded the whole thing. And on my way here, I was watching that. And I don't, I didn't know what to think of it, but right before we pulled out of the, where the plane was parked, right behind was the Safari Link plane that was just passing. It's in the video. And I, I just couldn't help but just kind of think of, was that like a prophetic thing of what was to come? So we started climbing five feet, a thousand feet, all the way to 10,000 feet. And I can tell you that kid was fearless. Newborn was fearless. I remember discreetly during that flight and, and I asked him, he did something, you people from uh, 99 Flying School, you can tell, you, you can probably understand this a little better. When the plane, you have the ability to stagger the plane. It's almost like it's shutting off and then you just turn it right back on. And he's talking about doing a 15 degree angle turn, 45. Now. 45 degree turn is you almost your stomach is almost falling out of your out of your body at least for me so what i could stomach was 15 degrees but he's like no 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 let's keep going that's nothing and my brother and i in the back i just saying like yo chill <laughs> because you're about to make us fall out this guy but newborn i took a screenshot on my phone how comfortable he is he was in that cockpit. At one point during the flight, he literally took off his, his hands off of the, the control thing and he just crossed his hands and he said, and, and he did a thumbs up. If you drive, you know, without hands, it means you're pretty comfortable driving, driving the car, right? Now it's one thing to do that, but it's another thing to do that while you're in the air. My brother was, Incredibly, incredibly talented. I, I am sorry to each one of you because you have lost, have lost an amazing young man. Our family has lost dreams. We had a vision for him. He had a vision for himself. <sighs> to my little sister Immaculate, you are now my responsibility. And whatever newborn was going to do, the visions, the dreams that he had, my brother and I, our family, we are going to ensure that that comes true. To your son, my nephew, more of the same. Our love doesn't change no matter what. And as hard as it is for me to stand here and to, to imagine that something, something hurt my brother so bad that it killed him as an older brother, We're supposed to protect our younger brothers. I truly hope that for my sake, let me speak selfishly here, that the school and the other airline that was involved, that they will provide answers, because I personally need them. There might, this, this might not be the right time, but I feel like I need to say that, because it's one thing to question his skills, and it's another thing to recognize negligence. So to you all, I am sorry for your loss. And I pray that 
as you live here, you can find someone to comfort you, get yourself into counseling. I'm a firm believer in grief counseling. Talk it through. I work as a chaplain in a hospital in, in, uh, in, the, in, in the state of Minnesota, and so I, I, I deal with death all the time. But this is, you know, there are words that you, that's, that's, there are things that are not supposed to go together. The, for instance, you don't think of the color red with, with an avocado, for instance, right? Because they don't match. And to hear newborn and dead and newborn and so sorry for your loss, and newborn and take heart, and newborn and this, and newborn and... Those things don't make sense to me right now. So I pray that you, you do that for yourself. Because I'm seeking answers too, and I don't have any right now. But I pray that as you grieve, that as I also try to make sense of this somehow, that you will be kind to yourself on the journey to heal. And I pray that God gives you healing. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Uh, it's that serious. Kindly find it with the within your hearts to say a prayer for us. Time is against us and uh, we should be stopping by now on that part as we welcome the pastor. But kindly allow me to recognize the presence of uh, two people who've been so instrumental in uh, newborn's life. Just wave to us. That old man is the father to newborn whenever he is in Nairobi. He guides him always, even before we get word of anything, he will have uh, sorted it out. Thank you, Mwaka, for coming, and may the good Lord give you comfort. Uh, Wakili Tom, that uh, is a very instrumental man to our family. He's a brother to Onyancha. And before we come from Kisi, some of us who are in Kisi, they will have solved whatever we wanted some themselves. They're actually a link between us and the young man whenever we can't reach him. May you be comforted as well for this big loss. I am now speaking in my capacity as a brother and not as the MC. And before I do, I was uh, almost uh, losing focus because you can bear with me. This is Job. Some of us don't know him as such. We call each other fondly as Sokro. He's named after one of the grandparents, grandfathers, and I am also one. So whenever we call each other, we don't call ourselves the names. I call him Sokro, and that is exactly what he calls me. Uh, he is a brother to newborn. In fact, we look for newborn. If you don't look, find him, then you look for a job. When you miss the two, then you start looking for Susan or anybody else. My brother is not easy, but uh, just a word. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you for showing up for this uh, prayer service. This shows how our brother touched your lives in various aspects. Dutes Yokimau Church, thank you so much for standing with us. 
without you, it could have been so hard for us. You have lost a beacon of hope. And to my little brother Elphas, after losing 20 years and catching up with your brother for almost a week, then it tears you apart. But we are with God. To my sister Ima, I know you have a lot of questions without answers. But with God, all will be well. For those of you who are here, please remember us in your prayers. You have seen there's a son who's going to grow without seeing his father. It's a challenge. It's going to be tough. But remember us in your prayers. Remember also our father who was back at home, Mr. James. I remember when we lost our big brother, Emmanuel. The life of my father changed until he passed on. It's going to be tough. Please remember us in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, my uh, younger brother. It's not easy, but uh, at least we are managing. Uh, sorry for almost forgetting you. I can speak and speak and speak, but uh, it's not necessary to do that now. I have been uh, knowing uh, fellowships in churches, many of them. But I can say, without mincing my words, that uh, the Sokimau Church, your fellowship is a true fellowship, that which is in the Bible. I want to thank you on behalf of our family. We have experienced true fellowship. And uh, may the good Lord uh, keep you and bless you in abundance. Uh, to our family, now that we are mourning and we are so feeble, the Bible does not allow us to make promises when we are in this state because we may not keep them. But nevertheless, my brother Nyabuti, you know how much we've done in the past to have a newborn join you. In the same strength, we will do whatever it takes humanly possible to make sure that uh, anything good for our sister and our son is doable. That count on us all of us collectively. Immaculate, we may not be able to fill the gap, but at least we will lessen the burden. You have us, and you can count on us at whatever level. Thank you to our parents, Uncle Lamek, Uncle Mote, and all the rest. We will remain to be your true obedient sons and uh, daughters. Even when you are mourning, we will still be that obedient so that we don't make this void so big count on us and we will do our best as your children. To the friends who have sacrificed their quality time and uh, 
resources for this noble cause. May the God of blessings bless you in secrecy so that you don't lack anything for supporting us and standing with us in these trying moments. To the school, we have learned your laws as well. We pray that the good Lord may help you overcome this loss. And uh, we are believers in the Bible. Whenever there is a loss of Moses, God brings up a Harun in his place. May that be realized in your school. To every one of us, even as we mourn, we pray that uh, you find time to pray with us. And uh, we have a great hope, the blessed assurance, the resurrection of the faithfuls. And when that comes, try and put yourself in perspective that when he comes, calling the names of those who slept in him, yours may not lack. Now we are making announcements as a family. There is a, there is a, a, a kind of a container just at the exit. There are those of you who may want to make their donations, kindly do. You're free to do that. Tomorrow we are having a, a, a fundraising, as my brother had informed us. Kindly find it within your tight schedules to come and be with us. On uh, Thursday, very early in the morning, as scheduled by the school, uh, newborn is remains will be flown to Kisi and we'll have a funeral at Rigoma. So kindly, if you can find time, come, and uh, let's give our brother a befitting send-off. Thank you all for coming and sparing your precious time. And uh, may the Lord of all blessings be with you till we meet when he has planned and seen fit for us to do so for we trust in him. Thank you, each and every one of you. I call upon the choir to come and usher in the pastor who will speak to us kindly. Do. Kuna 
Thank you, choir, for that wonderful song that our life is so short. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we have sat for quite some time. Can we rise up a cycle upon the choristers to read us in uh, CDA Emino song number 428? First, stands and chorus as I pray to welcome Pastor Choristers. In the 
Father, we are shedding tears of pain because of death. But in this country, we know it's not our home. You are preparing a good place, a better country, where there will be no death, no pain, no weeping. And we are looking for that better country. Now that we are in this country which is painful, we ask for your comfort. We ask for your comfort, Lord, that in time like this, you are promised that you are so close to those who are brokenhearted and you pine their wounds. Lord, we ask that you pine the wounds of this family. Death has dropped them a very young, vibrant man who had a future. A young family has been left behind and you are promised that, Lord, Widows and orphans, they belong to you. You take care of them. Lord, we ask that you come down in a mighty way. And Lord, be with them. As a servant of God, Pastor Philemon Kiton comes to bring words of comfort. You see, Master, for a vessel and speak to us all. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you so much for being patient. Uh, now time has come, we want to listen from the mouth of God and uh, to the family, uh, my personal and sincere condolences. But there's hope in Christ. There's hope in Christ, all is not lost. Let us fix our hope in the Lord. Let us trust in the Lord because soon he's coming to take us to a better country. For the young widow and the young woman, God is going to be with you. And he has promised that he will never leave you. Uh, it is my pleasure now to welcome uh, my senior pastor, Pastor Philemon uh, Kitonga, uh, to speak to us. Pastor, welcome. Thank you. Um, good afternoon to all. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to take this time and opportunity to pass my condolences um, to Immaculate, that is wife, to newborn, um, to the school, 99S Flying School. I believe that is the best pronunciation of the title of the school, the students, the church, the friends, relatives, cousins, and all those present here, friends, parents to newborn, the late, and also parents to my sister, Immaculate, brother to newborn, Eliphaz Nyabuti. May God bless you, may God comfort you in a special way. You know, uh, it was a, such a moment um, it happened at that one time. Um, but you know, the work of the pastor is to comfort all those who are believed. But one day, now the pastor got involved. He lost actually his son, he's my friend. And um, many people came and they were asking, so what shall we share? to comfort our pastor. He has been there with us. He has been preaching the word of God. But now one of the elders, not the ones who are here, stood and said, now pastor, you know, after all this, all the verses that you've been preaching to us and reading to us, now we pray that you go and read all of them. <laughs> you know, okay, they were trying to crack a joke that, you know, uh, you know it, it is a bit tough, let me tell you. I was bereaved and I lost my brother, actually, in December. And I know it is not easy. It is not easy. 
And uh, my prayer is that God will comfort all of us. Allow us to take just the shortest time, and I believe that no one will move out because we come to the best and uh, actually to the real, the real um, issue and the reason why we are congregated here, just to offer prayers for this family. And all of us, irrespective of our den denomination, where we come from, we have come as a team to just whisper a word of comfort to each and every one of us, specifically to the family of the late newborn. So allow me say that um, sometimes I normally say, blessed are those who preach short sermons, for they will be called again. So <laughs> how I pray that I do it, that I may be called again. Amen. Psalm 30, verse 5. Part B, Psalm 35, Part B. Psalm is a book of David, and uh, these are, you know, they are songs, they are hymns, and uh, I love uh, this book. It's my favorite, especially when it comes to such uh, traumatizing and uh, uh, such times. I normally uh, take my reading from the book of Psalms. And uh, because uh, we classify it in the wisdom literature. And uh, the main uh, theme of this book says uh, it's all about the worthiness of God. Despite the tears, the worthiness of God. That is why we have to praise him no matter what. Um, this is a psalm that has been written by David. But remember, the book of Psalm has been written by many authors, uh, including Jeduthun, Solomon, Hasab, the sons of Korah, Ammon, and Hethan. But this one specifically is written by David. And I'm reading part B only. And it says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Praise the Lord. May we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, indeed it is sure that we are weeping and we are mourning. But thank you because of the assurance that even while we are still shedding our tears, you have promised us that uh, uh, the joy will come in the morning. May you assure this family so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The someone says, weeping may you do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm taking it, actually um, synchronizing it with the book of Luke. And this is chapter 7. I'll just read few verses to comfort this family. Luke chapter 7. And this is verse uh, 11. Um, as we comfort the family of newborn, we also say take heart even to the school for the loss of the student. And uh, we believe that God is with you, is going to stand with you. Allow me to read the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 11. It happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. Verse 13 says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not Weep. Verse 14 says, Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. Verse 15 says, So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he, present, he presented him to his mother. Then verse 16 says, Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. My prayer is God to visit this family. Indeed, weeping may endure for a night. Some versions say it may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Friends, it was at a time when a widow who had only son, and remember this was a widow, uh, where they were, it's, it's known as a city of Nain. And in this city, 
which is actually um, interpreted as a, you know, a happy place, eh? a place where you can get comfort. And no wonder death is happening. The widow loses her only son, his only son. Now what is happening? She is mourning. The only son, she's a widow, and nothing. When she looks ahead, nothing. When she looks back, nothing. All her life has been closed. She is traumatized, and this is the situation that we are in. Now, my brothers and my sisters, allow me to comfort you with these words. At that particular moment, when they were moving out of Nain, many women came, the way we have come as friends, to stand with this family. And they said, our sister, the widow, we want to assist you to bury your son. But friends, when they were moving out, I can see and I can imagine many of the women coming together, having a budget, the way we have the budget to go and bury our friend, newborn. They started moving. Actually, during those times, the cemeteries were outside the town. And this is what happened. They moved out in a slow motion. In, you know, in the Jewish culture, the person who is bereaved should be in the front. So I can see the woman shedding tears. The way I can see Immaculate shedding tears, you know. And even our school, and all of us as friends, and even as parents and as brothers, shedding tears and moving, you know, all the hopes have been dead. So what happens, especially when you trust God, when you believe God, like our pastor, and then all of a sudden, tragedy eats. This is what is happening. At the gate, the crowd is meeting another crowd. Jesus coming from Capernaum, actually from healing the sojourian servant. And when they are coming, they are meeting the two of them. The crowd from Capernaum and another crowd from Nain. When they meet, one of the crowd is carrying a dead body and another crowd is whispering and very joyous and laughing and saying, oh yes, we have a man who can resurrect the dead. Friends, look at these two crowds. Then when they reached at the gate, the Bible says, allow me to read, verse 13 says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. My prayer is may God have compassion on us. May God have compassion on you, Immaculate. May God have compassion on our brothers, on our sisters, and all of us having lost. He can read our hearts and even our minds. You know, sometimes, yes, it can hit. You will find just shedding tears. Because when you look at the young family, the young boy, just one year, eight months, who has been left, yes, it is something to be sorrowful of. But now Jesus is coming in. He is saying, have my compassion. Amen. Can we have the grace of God? Yes, it is tearful. You know, it is traumatizing. But my prayer is, may the compassion of God fill all of us in Jesus' name. He had compassion. And then he said this, do not weep. Do not weep. In the Jewish culture, it was against the law to tell someone who has been bereaved, not, don't weep. How can you tell me not to weep, yet I've lost the only son? In the Jewish culture, you know, men who are here, men used to provide for the family. And when the man dies, the son would now provide for the family. If the son happens to die, the woman starts begging. This is the Jewish culture. Now, the husband has died, and probably they buried this husband at the same place near the gate. And now, this woman is going to bury now the last hope, the son. It is so tearful, and the men who are here, imagining that, you know, you brought up your son, and now this is the last moment. You are seeing your son, the only person you can depend I want to tell you, when he said do not weep, he meant this, that know the giver and the provider of life and the compassion. My prayer is as we weep, may we weep like those who have hope. May we weep knowing that one day those who have rested in Christ will be resurrected and they will be caught up together with us. Amen. This is the greatest hope. I want to give just four points on this story. Just four of them, 
And after this, I'll be calling all of us to come and also to pray for this family. Allow me to say this. Just four things that I can observe from this. There is Jesus who sees what the crowd cannot see. Amen. There is Jesus. There is God who sees what Immaculate is going through that we, we cannot see. There is a God who sees what you are going through, what makes you to put on hold your office work and to leave your places of work to come and stand with this family. There is a God who sees. How I pray, may this God see you. May this God comfort you. There is this God. He saw the widow and he had compassion. Say, do not weep. Something else. Jesus saw her, uh, her and he had compassion. Friends, it is only Jesus. Jesus now comes in. He says, let me have the coffin. You know, they used to make one that is open. I know many of us, we fear the coffin. Eh? Yes, and even dead bodies. In the Jewish culture, you are not supposed even to touch a dead body. But Jesus goes against the culture. He goes and even touches the, the dead body. You know, it is only Jesus who can touch what is unclean and it becomes clean. It is Jesus who can touch what is dead and it becomes alive. How oh, I pray, may God, may Jesus touch even our dead plants, our thoughts. May God touch, you know, our sorrows that they may become alive again. Praise God. He touches the young dead man and he says, arise. He arises and he sits up. Can you imagine? They were coming out, coming to bury someone. And then Jesus touches and the man comes up. He resurrects. The plant they had and the women, they had prepared meals to eat even after the burial. Now they are going to eat after the resurrection. Praise God. Can I tell you that the son of the mother has death in him. But the son of the father has life in him. It is only Jesus who can restore our brokenness. How I pray may Jesus restore our brokenness. Indeed, we are broken up, but Jesus can restore our brokenness. Immaculate, allow Jesus to restore your brokenness. Elphaz, Crispus, allow Jesus to restore your brokenness. Even to our dad, you know, it is traumatizing, but allow Jesus to restore your brokenness because there is the one who can see what we can't see. Friends, it is true. And allow me to say this, to give this point, our God can do anything. And this is the compassion of Jesus. May God have compassion unto us. Touching a dead person, and then he comes back to life. I remember one of the men here in Tanzania, um, just last month, he appeared in the, in the news that he used to sleep in a coffin. He could marry a wife, a girl, then when he, she comes uh, home and finds the man, you know, sleeping inside a coffin, ah, the girl says no. Then she goes, and then the media came to interview this man, and they were asking this man, why do you sleep in a coffin? Then he told them, why are you shocked? I'm just reflecting. What will happen when I will be long ago dead? So I don't know how many can do that. I don't know. I don't know. It is quite traumatizing. You know, I met someone there outside and he was asking me, by the way, pastor, you know, this was a pilot. Can we ask our pilots who are here, even our captains, how do you feel when you are there in the air? So how do you feel? What is the experience? Because uh, I remember one day, story is given of a husband and wife traveling in a plane. But now, the, the attendants in the plane uh, noted that something was in a mess and the plane was almost crashing. So they give the announcement, guys, the plane is crashing. So if you have to repent, repent. If there is something you can say, last words you can say. Man, <laughs> man turns to his wife and says, now we are done. What can we do? Nothing, no questioning. Should we repent? Yes. Who is going to start? Me. Then the, then the wife starts, you know, my dear husband, the plane is crashing. Indeed, we are dying. So what should we do? What should we do? do you know, um, let me remind you, 
that man, the garden man, you are asking and doubting about me. Do you know that when you are away, I normally sleep with him. You know, men, I know it is difficult. You know, sometimes, because it, we, they are dying, of course, I'm asking a question. If today, if right now, you will be told you will not reach your office, what is it that you can say the last one? You know, Musea Kameza Kamobi, I forgive you. I forgive you. No question. Then the man says, You know, <laughs> that son of our maid you were asking about, do you know that he is mine? Oh, I've been asking about this. And then this is the last moment. Oh, my husband, I forgive you. I forgive you. Then the story went on. You know, that money, you know, uh, the husband was telling this, uh, the woman and the, his wife, you know, that money you are questioning me about, the money that I was telling you, I don't know where it is. I have, I have it. I have another wife. And that is where it is. Oh, I forgive you. Then the lady comes in. That main money you are asking me about, 2.5 million, where it went. I went, I bought a plot, I have it. So the plot you are questioning about, it is mine. Although I hid from you. Oh, I forgive you. So they repented so many things. You know, a lot of dirty things that they had hid from each other and they were spouses. At the time, they were almost doing that. You know, the others were doing, making noise from the plane. You know, the plane is coming to crash and all of a sudden, announcement comes in. Friends and guys, can see now the climate is coming down. So the plane, we are safe, we are landing safely. Hey. <laughs> and they have repented. <laughs> Everyone has repented, you know. Now, can you imagine... The plane landing safely, and you have repented everything that you had hid to your spouse. The man stood. He just stood and spoke loudly, and he said, No, it can't happen. The plane has to crash. I want myself dead. You know, I want myself dead. I don't want to leave. How can I live staring at my wife? Yet my deepest secrets have revealed to them. I want the plane crashed. If now the plane will be crashing on your side, which sin would you repent? All of us. The chapter of Newborn is closed. Newborn was a Christian. I love, you know, the, the, the statement from our, from, our, from our director. He says that, yes, he was staunch. He used to come to church. You know, our friend, indeed, even the church has lost. Mano, if today were your last day on earth, how would you do? I would like even to be a pilot because I believe pilots, when they are now starting to fly, uh, they normally repent at first. Because they don't know, you know, what must be, garage. So they have to be sure of it. You know, you know having, having to fly is a serious thing. More than even being a medicine, you know, I have a, I have a bit of, uh, no, of, uh, of medicine, but now flying, it's a serious thing. Yes, sorrow, pain, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The woman meets Jesus and things change. By the time she was coming to bury the husband, Jesus was not at the gate. But now this time, she is coming to bury her only son. But she meets Jesus at the gate. Amen. Jesus is the giver of life. Jesus is the carrier. He is our burden carrier. How I pray, may Jesus carry our burdens. Yes, they are too heavy for us to carry. But my prayer is, may Jesus carry our burdens. He carries the burdens of this widow. He just tells the lady, you oh, know, don't weep. He touches the grave. The coffin, and then the son resurrects. He holds the son his hand. Then he presents the son. You know, he doesn't leave it at that moment. He presents the son back to the mother. What a joy when Jesus comes, presenting back our brother newborn to us. Amen. What a joy will it be? You know, my Bible tells me, and this is the last point that says, you know, when we feel forgotten or overlooked or insignificant, we must remember Jesus came to the widow in a time of desperate need. And he will come to us as well. Even during our desperate 
need. Reaching out to bless others around. Thank you, friends, relatives, for coming to bless the family of newborn. It's a great love. It's great grace. How I pray, may the love of God and the grace of God cover you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, it is only Jesus who can replace the despair of death with the hope of life. This is the only Jesus. God knows and understands the details of our situation. The woman was no stranger to sorrow. She had gone through that. When we are hurt, God hurts more. He understands our hearts. What a joy to know that God understands our heart. You know, we may say we know how our sister is feeling and how our brothers are feeling, but God understands how we are feeling more than the way we understand. My prayer is, may he understand and rescue you in Jesus' name. God will do unusual and crazy things to interrupt and change your situation. Friends, God is very intentional about dealing with your situation. That is why he says, don't weep. God's word is powerful. Let me tell you, friends, we might ask questions. Somebody has said, I still have questions to God. But friends, can I tell you something about God? Sometimes when God seems to be late, he is on time. We might ask ourselves, where was God when the plane was crashing? You know, where was he? Sometimes when God seems to be late, he is on time. Friends, allow me to tell you that sometimes when God seems to be absent in our lives, he is present. He knows, he understands, it does not get him into surprise. He was there. That is why he says, even when you go deeper into the oceans, I am there. Even when you go higher to the heavens, I am also there. So what do we do? We just present ourselves to him because he knows us in and out. Friends, allow me to tell you that when God seems to be doing nothing, he is doing something. God is doing something on us. God is comforting us. The school I know we have lost, God is doing something on you. The family, God is doing something on you. The church, God is doing something on us. My prayer in Jesus' name. Sometimes, when God is silent, when God seems to be silent, he is speaking. Yes, God might seem to be silent, but he is still speaking. And maybe I can say, when sometimes God seems to be wrong, he is right. We might question why God allowed it to happen at such a tender age. You know, I know and I believe that many of us, we are young people. Such a tender age, 26 years. We might not fathom the understanding of God, but allow me to comfort you with these words. That when God seems to be wrong, he is always right. He knows. It's only that we, can fathom, we cannot fathom the understanding of God. And that is why he says, I need to give you the comfort. Let's allow God to comfort us. Immaculate. Allow Jesus to love you back. Sometimes we detach ourselves from God. We get bitter with God. But allow God to love you. Indeed, death stares at us. Death stares at us. But friends, allow us to be comforted by God. Allow me to say that weeping may tarry for the night. Weeping is a reality in a fallen, sinful, sorrowful world. There is sadness in this world the way we are sad today. You know, friends, things are not all as they should be. There is mourning in this world. There is mourning in this family of Obote. Omote. There is mourning, I think, about the people I know who have lost precious loved ones who reason, over recent days. And I think about others I know who have been hurt in significant ways, you know, by relationship and things that have been done to them. And there is such grief and hurt and sorrow and sadness. Friends, allow me to tell you, weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The Bible records that Things that the Lord has prepared for us, no eye has ever seen it. Things that the Lord has prepared for us, no ear has ever heard about it. Things that the Lord has ever prepared for us, nobody has ever comprehended. The good things that we know 
that are in this world, nothing that we can compare to the things that the Lord has prepared to us. And that is why he says, let not your hearts be troubled. For I am going to prepare a place for you. And once I am done, I'll come for you. I'll pick you that where I am, you may be there also. Amen. What a promise. How I pray. May we stick to this promise of God, of Jesus. That one day when he comes with the trumpet of the sounds, where and what we are sharing, the grave, you know, and the coffin where we are going to lay our brother is not the hand. Amen. That is not the hand. The grave is not the hand. And Muslims can, call, even they can uh, confirm this with me. Even the Islam, we believe and they believe that there is a new heaven. Amen. There is a heaven that God is preparing for us. When you ask even the Buddha and the Hindu, they will tell you that you know what? We even in our religion, we believe and we trust to karma, doing good things. Doing good things for we believe this is the only thing that we can give to our blessed, to our people and to our relatives. When we go even to other religions, name them, you will find that there is something that they affirm. Can I read this one from one of the others to say that? This uh, uh, got my attention as we come now uh, for prayer. This is one man who is known as Jean Paul C. Sartre. And he says, I know I shall die in hope. Amen. He is an atheist, but he can attest that I want to die in hope. And he says, I know I shall die in hope, but hope needs a foundation. Atheist is speaking. Friends, thank God we have a foundation, and our foundation is Jesus Christ. Maculate, your foundation is Jesus Christ. Friends and my brothers, help us. Crispus, our foundation is Jesus Christ. Cousins and friends and relatives, our foundation is where God is. As long as we are on Jesus' hands, we are safe. May God bless us. May God comfort us. May God be with us. May God take care of us. May God sustain us. May God wipe away our tears for he assures us that one day when the heavens and the, you know, the new heart and the new heavens will be there, he says, I will wipe away our tears. He will wipe away our tears. There will be no more death, no more sorrows, no more pain, no more hearts, no more coffins, no more hospitals, you know, for the former things will have gone. May you be comforted in these words. It is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Albert Einstein says, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. May we live for this hope that is, has been given to us in Jesus. Then Franklin Roosevelt says, we have always held to the hope, the belief, the conviction that there is a better life, a better world beyond the horizon. How I pray, may our eyes have the glimpse of this better world. May our eyes have the glimpse, you know, and our memories to this better world and the better beyond the horizon in Jesus' name. May God bless you. May God bless us. May God take care of us. May we be comforted by these words that indeed weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus resurrected the widow's son. He gave back to her. This is an illustration of what will happen when Jesus will come. All the tombs, hata kama ulianguka na ndege, hata kama ulikuwa wapi, hata wala wanaangukanga na ndege, they get to the ocean deep that nothing we can bury. Let me tell you, when Jesus comes, even the oceans where our people have died, they have no power. Jesus has the power. We just call upon, arise, and they will come from where they are. Even those who burned, Beyond recognition. When Jesus says, come up, they will come. This is the hope that we have in Jesus. It is my hope. May it be your hope in Jesus' name. I call upon um, our sister, uh, Immaculate, Elphaz, come, Crispus, the cousins who have been here, the family members, just to come. Our elders who are in this congregation, kindly come. We whisper prayer. 
Um, it will be so good. It will be so good. Pastor Stanley Machuma, just come. I'm so happy and glad to see you. We want to whisper prayer to this family. And from where you are seated, because normally as we come to these prayers, this is the most important session. Just whisper prayer. Just whisper prayer to this family. Uh, ask God to bless them with the comfort. Yes, indeed, right now they are mourning. But how I pray, may joy come in the morning. Yes, we might not see newborn right now, but we are assured when Jesus will come, we shall see newborn. This is the assurance that we have. Friends, indeed, it is true that our Jesus and our God cares for us. All the holders, even in our congregation, just to come, we pray uh, for, for, for this family. Um, thank you so much, our elders. We can stand behind uh, the family. Thank you. Okay, one, two. Thank you. Um, Pastor Stanley, welcome. Um, we present this family to prayers. Elders, you can stand behind uh, the family. Uh, sisters, kindly just come, come, come here. Um, don't mind about the camera. Even elders, you can come this side. We just um, surround them. It will be so good. Thank you. Family members, take a heart. God is with you. It is not easy. It is not easy. But God <coughs> is with you. Our pastor, Pastor Stanley Machuma, will pray. And then I will conclude. When we are doing that, congregation, whisper prayer. Whisper prayer. Whisper prayer to this family. Whisper prayer. We have a fundraise. Whisper prayer for it. We have a burial scheduled on Thursday. Whisper prayer about it. Whisper prayer even to the family, even to other family. Just whisper prayer to them. Even to the school, whisper prayer. I know we have been hurt. Whisper a prayer. With a prayer, everything is well. Let us pray. Our merciful and loving Father who art in heaven, it is only you and you alone who knows what is in the heart of Immaculate and the family members of the late son who has slept. Yes, there is a lot of bitterness and discouragement. But Lord, you have told us that a time is coming when joy will be in their hearts. Amen. For now, our prayer is, Lord, continue comforting them. Let them, they may, let them lose other things, but not hope. If we lose hope, we have lost everything. Yes. Our Father in heaven, Thank you so, so much for your word because it is only your word which tells us the truth about our lives. There is a lot of uncertainties in our lives. There are many things which we do not know in our lives. One of them is why good people, close, closest people, loved ones, are separated from their loved ones. Lord, thank you for your word which says, we may not tell, we may not know, but they have been saved from anything wrong which could appear, which could be uh, bad than, I mean worse than what has happened. It is hard. It is hard to comfort the bereaved ones. But Lord, thank you so much because you have given us your word, which does a lot in our hearts. We pray for this family. As they prepare for that day of their son to be put, I mean to be laid down, Father in heaven, we pray that you may be their closest friend. Other friends, we will be with them in absentia. But we know there is one who will be closer to them, and this one is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is, is always 
with you. May he continue keeping you and blessing you and comforting you. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Together with those prayers, our heavenly God and our Father in heaven, you are so gracious, so merciful, and so kind. How I pray may your compassions be restored, bestowed upon this family. For your compassions are new every morning. Oh, yes. Lord, how I pray may these compassions be afresh. Even after the sorrow, after the tears, which may you do for a night. Lord, may these compassions come in the morning with the joy that you have promised. My prayer is that, Lord, may you comfort the wife to newborn in a special way, immaculate, their son, their brothers, their parents, their nephews, their nieces, their friends, even the school, the workplace where newborn used to work, and all of us who are here, Father, may you comfort us in a special way, Father. Because comfort comes from above in heaven. Lord, thank you because you resurrected the name widow's son. Indeed, it was joy. For we believe that God, when you will come again, oh, Jesus, you will resurrect all those who are dead and you will bring them. You will rejoin. It will be a moment of rejoining. Lord, how I pray. Father, may you give us this encouragement. May our hope rest in the resurrection morning where we will meet all our beloved friends, our brothers and sisters who have slept in the Lord. Thank you for the elders who are also praying in their innermost hearts. Thank you, Father, for the congregation who are also praying. Even as we also pray, also pray for the logistics, the preparations to go and to lay, to rest our brother and our son. Father, may you give us success. The fundraise that is due tomorrow, may it be successful. Those who will be traveling, many of us, to home, and even back, Lord, how I pray, may you safeguard our travels that we may be going well and coming back safely under your glory. Amen. Lord, may you secure us, safeguard us from the evil one. And Lord, even during the material day, the burial day on Thursday, we call upon the Lord, you may secure us too, that you may be with us, that everything will go on well as planned. Mm -hmm. Father, as the family comes into terms with the laws, Lord, may you remind them that they have to fix their eyes on you because this is where they can get their hope. Thank you, Lord, because you promised us not to let our hearts be troubled. How I pray, may you comfort them. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Lord, take care of us even as we go to our respective destinations. Safeguard us until we meet again. Our prayer and my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you. May God take care of you. May be held us. We can shake their hands. Then as we shake their hands, uh, held us. Isaac, Isaac, you can be doing announcement or our MC as we shake their hands. Those who wish to shake their hands, a representative from the 99s, you can come. We shake their family hands. Uh, I've seen friends, you can come. We shake their hands. Then from there, the program is over. I'm happy just coming to sit, even if you have not talked. God and Jesus, is, Jesus has recognized your presence. Kindly, may God bless you. Thank you for your love. May God bless you. May God take care of you. Thank you, Pastor. I want to call upon uh, my sister Susan to come and give a vote of thanks. Good afternoon once again. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for finding time to be with us since this happened. 
most of you have been with us every evening for prayers and we've spoken so much and we feel comforted. We don't take it for granted that you took off your time today from work to come and mourn with us and comfort us. We sincerely appreciate. To the church, I think my brother said that and I want to reiterate that you've, you've fellowshiped with us and you've touched many hearts. Not only us, but the other people that you have been interacting with. It gives us a reverence to remind ourselves that we belong somewhere and the church is the foundation. We sincerely thank you. We know you're going to be with us through the process. We appreciate that. We don't take it for granted. To the Adventist men, we know you've done so much. You've talked so much about our brother, how committed he was. If you've given him a befitting send-off as the Adventist men. The women ministries, you've preached far and beyond. I have seen most of you dedicated coming to Siokimau every day, every day, and we really appreciate that. We thank you. To the children ministries, we appreciate your support. And you have a young member to nurture, and we believe that it will continue. We are a family founded family that is in church. So you will see a lot of us singing and giving praise. Not because we are praising of what has happened, but what we know who God is. You saw a young man read a Bible, a verse this morning. I learned that from him, saying we continue the brotherly love. In time of grief, it is difficult. It is very difficult and there can easily be conflict. But whatever Iman read for us this morning, Hebrews 13 verse 1, is what that is going to continue encouraging us. To this school, we really thank you. You've seen us in our most vulnerable time. You've seen us broken. We've taken you through an emotional turmoil, but you've stood with us. Most importantly, to appreciate that the senior management, you from another religion that totally does things different. But it's humbling to see you sitting with us here. It's your commitment and your dedication. And we appreciate the 99 school. Colonel, you described my brother exactly so. A neat boy. Sorry, I call him a boy. He's a married man with children, with a child. But to me, he's a little boy because I brought him up. I'll miss most calling him Ayesokoro when I want him to do anything. So that description you heard from the school is exactly so. A neat, a neat guy who loved fine things. We thank you so much for the support. We thank you, the students. To the neighbors, Nairobi is having high walls, but the walls for Siokimau were not there. You've been with us all through. We really appreciate all the support, all the care that you've given us. We don't take it for granted. I take this opportunity also to thank our friends who have been with us who have spent time to come and mourn with us, we thank you for your presence. As a family, I want to say special thanks to two people. First, to Tata Lamik. You've been a pillar to us, even when you're our broken most. Thank you. To our Auntie Thabita, we never call her auntie because we are almost age mates. We always joke. In fact, when you call her auntie, she doesn't even respond. She has been with us ever since and guided us and supported us. Auntie, 
even if we don't call you until we give you the respect and we love you. And we thank you so much for the support and the guidance. I'll finally say a few announcements. Tonight we're having a night vigil and prayer at home in Siokimau. Uh, if you're able to, please join us. We want to fill the night and the heavens with song and hymn. Come with a candle, come with a flower, or just come. We'll be there from 6 to 10 p.m. Tomorrow, we'll have a fundraiser at Professional Center starting at 4.30. This is mainly to cover a few costs that come with the funeral arrangements, as you may know. It would be great to see you again supporting us. The family will be traveling home on Wednesday morning and in readiness for the burial ceremony on, on Thursday. We'll have a night vigil at home. We, have, we, we hope we'll have song and praise at home on, thurs, on Wednesday night. On Thursday, courtesy of the school, they will fly our brother's remains home. We'll have a funeral service at Rigoma Market, which is about a kilometer away from our home. And we'll then proceed home for the interment at 3.30. Those are the main things that maybe you need to take note of. And once again, thank you so much for mourning with us. Thank you, sister, for such an emotive uh, vote of thanks. You bear with us. We are a very jovial family. When we manage to do it, we can speak well, but we are unable to do it right now. So you bear with us. Otherwise, we are, we are so uh, coherent when it's not such a hard time. You bear with us if we stammer or we miss anything. The choir will be doing uh, one last item as we live at uh, our own pleasure. Kindly take the stage. Thank you each and every one of you for your time and unwavering support, especially during these very trying moments. May God bless you. You are free to live as the choir presents.